Hello everyone and welcome to Dutch Greybeard. This is my reading wrap-up over the last 52 days, starting at February 8 and ending on March 31. As usual with these reading wrap-ups of mine, I'll show you the graph of what I've been reading. Around the end of June of 2023, I started to record when I started and finished reading a book. So this chart starts there. Having a booktube channel really awakens the bookkeeper in me. Anyway, this chart shows you what I've read and when I read it. While this slides across the screen, you may wonder how it is that it takes me 15 days or 30 days or even longer to read a book. I always read three to five books at the same time, so when one of these really grabs my attention, the others are pushed back in the queue. This way it can happen that I've started reading a book in November 2023 and finally finished it at the end of March 2024, as is the case with one of the books in this video. That doesn't mean, of course, that I've actually been reading in this book for 120 days. It means that during those 120 days, I picked it up about five or six times to get through it. Audiobooks tend to take me a long period because I only occasionally have opportunity to listen to them. With that out of the way, let's dig into the inescapable statistics for these last 52 days of reading. I've read 20 books with a total page count of 6,000 362. More than usual, I've read books outside of the fantasy genre. Only half of my reads were fantasy, six were children's books, and the other four were non-fiction. I've read a lot more than I usually do, but looks can also be a little bit deceiving. More than once I've said that I'm a slow reader, which is true. But this year I've had quite some free time, and second, some of these 20 books are very small, and some were very easy reads. I'll make sure to highlight this aspect when we get to those books. So, let's dive into the books in order of genre, and get all of the non-fantasy out of the way first, starting with the four non-fiction books I read. The first book is one that I actually forgot to mention in my last wrap-up. So I'll sneak it in here. It's a very small book with only about 100 pages and it is written in Dutch by a very good friend of mine, Fred Teunus. I did the editing of this booklet and although it is very small, there's a lot to say about it. But that is more suitable for a different kind of channel, so I'll keep it very brief right now. The title? Bij mijn weten, would translate as, as far as I know. They are short autobiographical observations interspersed with poems and what the author has named realizations. They illustrate the writer's view that the idea of God as the other is a fundamental flaw in our Western society. In his view, we are part of God. This God, as all that is, corresponds with a holistic and socially involved alternative. Then, a completely unplanned book intervened with all of my reading plans because my wife was reading this in a Dutch translation and highly recommended I should read it too. So I read Wild by Cheryl Strait at the end of February in four days time. We also watched the movie with Reese Witherspoon together. I love books about hiking and this one was no exception. Very candidly and occasionally in your face descriptive, the author tells about her struggle after the death of her mother, her escape into drugs and the many fleeting sexual encounters. To stop herself from drifting further away down this destructive path, she decides to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. Completely untrained and with unrealistic expectations, she starts off. During her arduous walk, we get flashbacks about her childhood, her marriage and her restlessness. In particular, the narration about her mother 
being diagnosed with terminal cancer and her rapid demise is heart-gripping and beautifully told. Everything I ever imagined about myself had disappeared into the crack of her last breath. She literally spends one page altogether on her abusive and aggressive father. Her mother finally escapes him with her two small children and later in life Cheryl talks to a friend about how the absence of her father was a good thing. She says, imagine I'd been raised by my father. To which her friend says, imagine your life if you'd had a father who loved you as a father should. Her unpreparedness for such a demanding hike leads to hilariously funny scenes and being a hiker myself, I recognized a lot of her experiences. I still see myself limping like a very, very old man across the campsite, hoping nobody would take notice of my laughable way of moving. Until halfway, this book had me by the throat, but the second half didn't touch me as much. I was left with a feeling that the writer could have told us more about what this extreme hiking experience had done to her inner world. She chose to merely describe and let most of the possible further interpretation of things to the reader, which I respect. I'm glad this book came my way. It has certainly boosted my own resolve to continue on my hike to Rome this summer. I gave Wild by Cheryl Strayed 82 points out of 100. Journey of Souls by Michael Newton is another recommendation by my wife. And I'm very glad she pushed me to read it because this is a spectacular book. There's no other word for it, really. The author is a hypnotherapist and this book is his rendition of what many of his clients during their sessions have told him about their soul experiences, starting with the departure from their deceased human body up until they've decided to have another life in the flesh. I will probably do another on the side video about this book because there is so much to say about it. For now, I'll just copy what I wrote after I finished this read. This is one of those powerful books that contributes to one's vision of life and death, our existence. One of those books that stays with you, not because of the language or the art, but because of the content that you can no longer unread. Good thing too. I spent 19 days reading it and I gave it 85 points out of 100. Although just for the content alone, it would deserve 100 points. My final non-fiction book is Alcohol Explained by William Porter. Altogether, it took me 121 days to finish this. Apparently, this was not my go-to book during that period, even though it's a very good book. It definitely made me reflect upon my own drinking habits. At the moment, I'm not particularly inclined to stop drinking alcohol altogether, but perhaps I'll change my mind when the content of this book has gotten more time to settle in my brain. This book scored 82 points out of 100. In between other reads, I devoured the six children's books about Millie Molly Mandy, recommended to me by Nev of Nev's book channel. Apart from the first in the series, the stories, which took me four days, each next book in the series took me one day, which is not really surprising. You can see that the very generous font size and the many illustrations made these books real page turners. These were very easy thousand pages. Altogether, the six books kept me occupied for about 10 days. And every time I took a breather, I read a few of these utterly innocent stories of this six or seven year old Millie Molly Mandy. Her full name is actually Millicent Margaret Amanda. But father and mother and grandpa and grandma and uncle and auntie couldn't very well call out Millicent Margaret Amanda every time they wanted her. So they shortened it to Millie Molly Mandy, which is quite easy to say. 
I'd say this juggling with names is one of the main reasons this book series is still in print nowadays, almost a hundred years after its first publication. The name in the title intrigues. The first volume, Stories, was published in 1928. The stories depict simple, small-town life and harmless and carefree children's adventures. My main appreciation concerns this innocent and soothingly nice world of these young children in rural Britain of 100 years ago, when television, flashy smartphones and high-speed cars were non-existent. The stories themselves are quite forgettable. These were easy and lovely pages to take shelter in. I gave all of these books 60 points out of 100. That seems like a low rating, but a solid three stars is pretty much, given the genre and how old these books are. Now on to the fantasy books I read in the last 52 days. In the second week of February, I read the first Discworld novel by Terry Pratchett, The Color of Magic, with 287 pages. It's one of the shorter novels in the series. I did a separate video on my reading experience, so no need to elaborate very much here. I spent three days with it and I certainly liked it, but it didn't blow me away. I gave it 62 points out of 100. This compares to a very decent three stars. I also finished listening to Duncan Quest on audio. With 91 days altogether, I took my time listening to this book, which was my second audiobook experience. Of this one, I also published a separate video recently. This is the second book in the Duncan Chronicles trilogy by William Horwood. More than once I've expressed my admiration for this writer, so I suppose I don't have to repeat that extensively here once more. My rating of this reread, 98 out of 100, says it all really. This is my only five-star read in this period. On February 28, I finished reading Towers of Midnight, the penultimate installment of The Wheel of Time. I carried this book around with me for about 17 days and I deeply enjoyed every reading session with it. I will keep it brief here because for this one I also did a full reading experience video. This was almost a five-star read, but with 94 points out of 100, it just missed the mark. Obviously, I loved it, and now have just one more book to read in this series that I started back in January of 2023. I noticed that I'm postponing this. On the one hand, I cannot wait to read the end, and on the other, I hate to say goodbye to all the characters and this world that I've been visiting for over a year now. I intend to wrap this series up with an extensive reading vlog of A Memory of Light. When that video will drop, I couldn't say. Just before the start of these 52 days, I read Dragonflight, the first book in the extensive series The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey. Shortly after that, I started reading Dragon Quest which took me about 22 days to finish, mainly because of my other simultaneous reads. I liked it very much, only slightly less than the first book. 84 points out of 100. After that, I started reading the so-called The Harper Hall Trilogy. These are three smaller books, about 280 pages each, that were very easy and very enjoyable reads. Dragon Song only took me one day, and up until now, this is my favorite of the Purr novels. I'm working on a reading experience video dedicated to the first six books in this huge series. That's where I'll go into more detail. For now, I'll restrict myself to giving you my ratings. Dragon Song scored 91 points out of 100. I also had a great time with the two sequels, Dragon Singer and Dragon Drums but it seemed as if most of the magic had already been spent in Dragon Song. Still, I flew through these books. 
Altogether, these three only took me six days to read. I gave Dragon Singer 79 and Dragon Drums 77 out of 100. After that, I immediately read the final book of the first trilogy, The White Dragon. This one took me seven days to read, and although it's a very good book, I find it is the least of the three in this arc. Still, with 82 points out of 100, that's four stars in the higher range. Then, finally, I got around to reading Jenny Words for the first time because I'm always interested in the way a writer develops during her or his career, I prefer to start at the beginning. Therefore, I read her debut novel, Sorcerer's Legacy, from 1982. This is only 300 pages long, and it's a very impressive book, mainly because of the crafty use of the English language. The story is good, but it's pretty straightforward good versus evil. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but it's obvious that a writer has very limited room for background, elaboration, or to specify or hint at the meaning when there's only 300 pages available. But wow, can this woman write? Straight away on page one, we get a glimpse into the feistiness of Elien, the main character. Feeling insulted by someone, she replies, May hell's own demons defecate on your tongue. It seems fit for little else. Words is poetic and meaningful language is a treat, although at times it was a little bit too much, even for me. She leaves no word or letter unused in her quest to transfer information to the reader and to beautify that information. My main disappointment is that the story is told too fast, in particular the ending. All in all, a very impressive debut, which makes me very eager to discover more of her works. I gave Sorcerer's Legacy 75 points out of 100. At the last instance, I was able to add my final read to this video, which I really wanted to include in these 52 days, which is another Terry Pratchett. In an earlier video, I mentioned my intention to read the Discworld books in their publication order, but I deviated from that plan because my wife started reading the Dutch translation of the Tiffany Aching books, upon my recommendation this time. When she arrived at the third book, Wintersmith, I couldn't resist to join her with my English copy. I have just finished reading it and I loved it. To me, it is better than number two in this sequence, A Hatful of Sky, but the first, The Wee Free Man, still holds first place. That is no doubt because the Knack McFeagle, the little blue men who are extremely funny, appear the most in that book. Still, Wintersmith is very funny as well, but it is much more than that. The story has lots of depth and wisdom. As soon as I can find the time for it, I will make a reading experience on this book, in which I will tell you what it is I liked best, with the usual quoting of sentences that are important to me. I gave Wintersmith 76 points out of 100. So, that's it. 20 books in 52 days. When I look at my agenda, which is slowly filling up this coming period, I will undoubtedly read less in the near future, which is fine. You know, in the end, it's about quality, not quantity. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until we meet again at Dutch Greybeard.